Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am flying over the South Pole of Kerbin in an otherwise innocuous station known as the RH Station. This uh, is made of, well, it's made of large parts. It's made of the Mark II hulls arranged carefully around a central core. We have four-way symmetry, but most of all, as we come over the North Pole, we have a secret purpose that is revealed by opening these doors. Inside each of these compartments, we have telegraph pole-sized pieces of steel. Attached to a simple deployment mechanism, these are, of course, the return of the Rods from the Gods mod. And I'll tell you that the quest to get this mod running again was a uh, in it was actually pretty darn epic salvager created the original mod and uh it was lost when kerbal spaceport went down but somebody had created an unofficial clone of kerbal spaceport and uh, we managed to acquire a copy from there patch it up and now i'm actually going to try bombing the kerbal space center using this as my kinetic kill projectile so the whole thing works using uh it uses uh, rcs thrusters for flight and rotation we have little uh, bodies attached in front and behind and of course unlike certain other games which I'm sure you will all mention uh, <laughs> when you're firing one of these things you're actually launching them backwards because you're trying to slow their velocity it's the most efficient way to put these things onto the target if you want to launch them straight downwards well your vertical speed is a lot less than your orbital speed and it actually take it takes a lot more fuel if you want to fire straight down so yes certain um certain other games have featured such a weapon system and uh, they don't do it right <laughs> but that's okay because nobody buys those games for accuracy they buy those games because they get to run around and shoot all their friends which is always a good thing so yeah, what I did there was I set up a maneuver node when I was deeper inside the atmosphere, turned towards and then detached. So now, uh, now I'm going to time accelerate and as the planet rotates underneath me, uh, my velocity will, vector will more or less turn into my facing vector just as I hit the atmosphere. Which is good because it means that we're hitting the atmosphere relatively straight on. Okay, I got it off by 45 degrees. This is my first guess at how to do this. And honestly, it's uh, kind of hard to get these things on target. Now, I do have the descent calculator, the trajectories calculator. The only problem with the trajectories calculator is that when I'm maneuvering, the parts that are attached to the spacecraft have different drag parameters than this core rod. This is obviously a sleek, polished, very dense, very thin piece of flying death. The everything else attached to it is much more um, low density. It's not. It's designed for flying in space, so it doesn't have the aerodynamic sleekness of this thing. But look at this thing go 20 kilometers up, and it's still moving at two kilometers per second. Practically orbital velocity. It looks like, to be honest, it looks like we're gonna come down a little west of the space center. But we will take this under advisement, we will feed this back, and we will get more accurate. Okay, so there we go, we hit in the hills. Let's go and repeat that now with new information. Okay, so part of the, the reason that we hit near the hills, of course, is because the planet is rotating underneath us, and we need to make we need to make a deflection burn. We need to make a bit of a plane change to make sure that we can put our things on target. Now we put this spacecraft in a polar orbit so that it would pass over the entire globe and therefore make every target eventually turn up underneath it. As it happens, this thing doesn't have quite the amount of delta V that I'm really going to need to put it bang on target every time, but that's okay. We've demonstrated the efficacy of this system, so let's just abuse the, the game as much as it'll let us. 
So yeah, you see we do have the trajectories computer. We have Kerbal Alarm Clock, which absolutely insists on displaying this window every time I reload, which is kind of frustrating, but never mind. So there, we've put ourselves into the bay, kind of close to the space center. Let's see how close we'll be once the once we actually arrive. And once again, this black vehicle of death, a kinetic kill weapon, weighing something like 18 tons and uh, having a cross-section of about one square foot. It does not slow down much, but uh, all, of the, all of its orbital energy is designed to go into the ground and make a very deep hole. It's not particularly good against moving targets because they will be able to get out of the way and this can't steer. But, if you have a buried bunker, this is the perfect thing to hit it. Okay, so more deflection maneuvers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the trajectories computer. And you'll notice that there's the blue path and there's red path. The blue path is actually closer to what I'm going to take. But I realize that I can still use the position vector to make sure that I account for the rotation of the planet and then try to guess where I will actually collide. Again, once I ditch the maneuvering hardware, I can't actually change my course, so, you know, all bets are off by that point. And, uh, of course, we did this inside the atmosphere, which means that we now have a decoupler or a stack separator pinned to the front of this vehicle. I hope it doesn't affect my trajectory too much because would be unfortunate if we missed because of that pesky little stack separator getting in the way and ruining my plans for Kerbal Devastation. This is looking a lot better. We're going to pretty much fly over the space center. Uh, at the very least, we will probably ruin their uh, tea break by, you know, buzzing the tower at Mach 3 or 4 or 5 even. Actually, we're slowing down a lot now. See, our trajectory is too flat, it's too shallow, so we're slowing down too much. That's pretty good though, and hey, at least we got it on the peninsula this time. We must have got it within about two kilometers of the space center, which is pretty darn good for my fourth attempt. Okay, so again, using the power of the saved game, I saved just before that, and now I'm going to use RCS thrusters to trim my orbit once again, perhaps put me closer and closer with e each iteration. A lot of spinning there, and we're going to be pretty close, but we're still going to miss. But I've counted up how many seconds I fired my RCS for, and so I will do this again, slightly longer, because we got to work on the deflection a little. And are we going to hit something? It's going to be so close. It's oh, it's uncomfortably close. Probably woke everyone up in the astronaut academy. And to which the teacher says, ah, get used to it. Explosions are perfectly normal in our line of work. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And oh, just over the R&D buildings. So close. So close. One more try. Once again, and uh, you'll notice this is using the stock atmosphere model because we switch from re-entry heating to Mach effects uh, just based on altitude rather than velocity, but this is bang on target! And it's still standing. But, but we just hit it with like all that effort and all that power, it should be like ashes. It should have been completely destroyed given the amount of kinetic energy that was in that thing. I mean, you know, what the heck? Why don't you work? Maybe it was a bug. Okay, let's try that again. Once more, hopefully on target for a date with Kerbal Destiny. The rod from the god is coming down from the sky, bringing judgment. Actually, it's not bringing judgment because it has no brain, no social structure. It is an inert block of steel moving at really high speeds and it didn't blow it up. That's not fair. Come on, I worked so hard to put this thing on target, and you the game is going to deny me the explosion? Seriously, come on. I'm sure when Jerry Purnell proposed this in the 60s, he didn't think that it would be phasing through buildings without causing any damage, but unfortunately, that appears to be standard mode of operation for a rod from the gods in Kerbal Space Program. Will it hit? Will it hit? No, it went straight through the building. 
through the entire thing. I think what's happening is it is going too fast and it's literally stepping through the model without actually hitting the sides and therefore it's not triggering the collision code. It's, it's a big problem in Kerbal Space Program for a lot of things because physics is using discrete time steps. When you're moving 1200 meters per second in one frame, you are moving 40 meters, which is larger than some of these buildings. And I suspect Unity is only calculating collisions on the edges. Let's try hitting a completely different, let's try actually hitting the vehicle assembly building since it's bigger. And you know, maybe if I slide along the side, if I can get it right, uh, maybe, you know, I'm looking for a building with uh, lots of greebles, right? More like, detail in its collision hull so there's perhaps more mesh to hit and no it just phased straight through the thing again but uh i'll tell you what i bet they were surprised on their tea break maybe if i do it often enough then the just the randomness of the game will put one of the frames inside the edge i mean it's like you know four meters long and no there, there's a finite chance, surely, that this will actually hit the building, no? Maybe? No? Well, darn it, with all this effort, I am not going to be denied an explosion. I have worked hard enough. I've put these things right on target, time after time. And I believe it's time to invoke the magical power of whack a Kerbal. So let's wait for this thing to hit. Yes! Whack it! Whack it! Whack it! Whack it! Yes, it was destroyed by the rods from the gods. Now you can appreciate the mighty power of this space weapon systems and its ability to wreak havoc against installations on the surface. This completely justifies all my effort. Yeah, I, this mod was so old that I had to go in and edit the part files to make them work again and make them behave correctly. And then, of course, I had to build a rocket and put it in space. And fly the thing, target the thing, all for this epic anti-climax, right? <laughs> Every single one of these hitting targets and yeah, I pretty much have to resort to cheating to make things explode. Ah, dear. Look, it's causing a chain reaction of buildings exploding everywhere. Clearly we hit the science and the, the science caused more explosions, more energy and things like that. But yes, everybody asked to see me doing the rods from the gods with the new damageable buildings. And yeah, it is this epic anti-climax. <laughs> Regardless, uh, I hope you've maybe learned how I target these things. It might give you a few clues. Uh, until the next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.